Hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Hope you're having a fantastic day, evening, afternoon, morning to you. Alright, uh, we are going to be covering human geography today. Part 8 on the structure of an economy, okay, as well as development levels. Okay, this is just a very, very small section of the entire Team 2.1 uh, syllabus, sort of. Um, so I'll just go through it quite briefly in general what you need to know and this is basically more for you to understand what context is in geography, right? So whenever you look at context, you always want to be quoting the different types of economies or the different levels of development. All right, let's just jump right in. So structure of the economy consists of five different sectors usually. You have got the primary sector, the secondary, tertiary, quaternary and quinary. Okay, essentially one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's what basically the different five sectors are. So, when we look at the structure of an economy, okay, firstly, you want to be looking at, let's say, if we look at the primary sector, okay, we're looking at things or activities, okay, that engage in the exploitation of natural resources. So, things like agriculture, fishing, mining, oil extraction, okay, basically very, very basic services. So, any sort of um, basic things like, let's say, farmers do, okay, or, or any of these oil extraction related type of services. So, this is a declining sector with no value add to the economy, okay, usually um, all of these goods, they are usually passed on to the secondary sector, we'll see later on. Okay, to actually be manufactured and um, to actually be sold for even more. Okay, so this is really looking at the primary sector. Let's say a farmer um, simply farms five watermelons from his own farm. He just sells those five watermelons. Okay, it doesn't go anywhere. That is what we determine. Uh, we call a primary sector. Okay, we look at secondary sector. So this is once the product has been changed and value has been added to any sort of raw materials. So this one is expanding in your less developed countries. Okay, mainly because um, this actually allows you to gain more revenue okay, as compared to the primary sector. Okay, at least the goods that are going out have got some sort of value added to them. Okay, the consumers are more likely to want to buy them okay, because um, they are either, let's say, packaged nicely or they have some sort of value that has been added, essentially. So output is usually immediately suitable for use by consumers okay, or may act as components for incorporation in other final products. So for instance, your, let's say, blackberries and strawberries that you find at supermarkets, okay, these belong to the secondary sector. Um, the strawberries itself from the farm would be the primary sector, but it has been passed on to a manufacturer, for example, uh, Driscoll's, okay, which actually does the packaging, they do the cleaning of it. So this is what we call the secondary sector. Alright, tertiary sector is uh, the next level. Okay, So we're looking at um, services that usually satisfy consumers. Right? So we're looking at wholesale, retail, transportation or entertainment industries. These are all belonging to the tertiary sector. Okay, so they usually employ low-skilled, low-paid workers. So it's things like people who simply just attend to the booths, right? Your sales, um, uh, and anyone who is basically involved in, um, kind of like your first-hand okay, promoting of such services. Okay, this is basically what our tertiary sector is. Okay, so we're looking at things like cinemas, things like, um, transportation, okay, your bus services, okay, your um, lorry services. Okay, these all belong to the tertiary sector. Okay, the quaternary sector is where it gets a bit more high skilled, okay, high um, education. So we're looking at banking, finance, business, um, professional services, legal. So these are basically intellectual services. So we're looking at larger corporations, we're looking at bigger firms, people who are in the offices, okay, wearing proper dress shirts, um, doing proper, um, uh, in this sense, quaternary based work such as um, data entry, okay, things like um, managing accounts, okay, these are basically what these people do. So they assemble, they transmit and process information for policy making and they can also be involved in economy wide decisions. Okay, so quaternary sectors is things like your all your larger companies in, in the economy. So like let's say DBS, OCBC, um, Apple, Samsung, okay, these mostly belong to the quaternary sector, especially the management level. Then you have got your quinary sector. Okay, quinary sector uh sec sector okay basically is anything that is provided by the government. Okay, so this one is above um, all your normal private firms really is belonging to the public sector. So it's not profit-oriented. So things like polyclinics, transportation, community centers, these services that are either full, highly subsidized or free of charge, okay, they usually um, belong They usually belong to the queer sector. Okay, it's usually where we find public goods at. Okay, so these are what belongs to the government's state-owned firms. They belong to the queer sector. Okay, then you move on to your levels of development. So now in today's economy, okay, we have less developed countries, we have developed countries, and we also have this new thing called newly industrialized countries. Okay, NIC is for in short, okay, newly industrialized countries. Okay, basically, uh, emerging economies that is kind of like in between your less developed yet they are also well developed enough. Okay, so example would be Singapore. Okay, Singapore went from a less developed country to now being quite a developed nation. Okay, but we are not um 
a developed country yeah okay not like america not like um some countries are there which are fully developed okay we're still developing still trying to figure out certain things so we are considered as this thing called a newly industrialized economy or newly industrialized country um in today's new society so we're, look, we're going to be looking at employment structure variations okay, when it comes to the level of um, development okay, and how this relates to your structure of the economy. So in less developed countries, okay, you realize that most people in the poorer countries, okay, they're heavily dependent on the primary sector. So they just farm, then they sell. They extract, they sell. Right? So they're very, very um, involved in this. Okay, we call them subsistence farmers. Okay, what actually happens here is that... Um, these poor countries, okay, they either may not have access, okay, to actually the to the technology to um, step up, okay, towards the sec- the secondary sector to actually make the goods even more um, enticing, okay, to actually value add to the goods. So as a result, they can only just farm, okay, or either that, um, just reap, okay, whatever they they have sown, okay, and then they will just have to simply use that to actually sell it off, okay. So that's um basically what they are, most of them over here we call them subsistence farmers, okay. That's what they are mainly involved in. So there's little tertiary, secondary, and quaternary sectors, okay. So the higher level services like banking and finance, legal, um, sales, marketing, okay. Those usually may not actually exist, and they are very vulnerable to changes in world markets, okay. As long as um let's say someone else comes out as a better farmer, for instance, okay, instantly that person takes over. If they can value add to the good, instantly your primary sector will definitely be on the decline. And so they also rely on one small number of products um, for most of the export earnings. Okay? So usually they are very, very specialized in these poor countries. For example, um, certain countries like Botswana, UK, Bolivia, they are very, very just simply focused on things like diamonds. Um, basically resources that, are, that they are blessed with, okay, that has been endowed okay, because of the resource-rich nature of the country and their geographical location. Okay? So as a result, they will only specialize in these products okay so you realize that um if you look at the case of let's say uh botswana okay when you've got a company like the beers um diamonds company coming in right what they actually do is okay we'll learn this in resource curse later on okay but what they actually do is to actually change the original diamonds into something that is even more refined something that has been value added then they package it and all right so that's bit that's basically what the secondary and tertiary sector will start to cover but these are covered by transnational corporations okay so usually when you look at only um the the people there who are working itself okay most of them are miners farmers right they focus on very very minor things okay like simply extracting the diamonds but the diamonds after that will get passed on to other bigger firms like the the beers company all right then we've got nic's like i've covered just now newly industrialized countries so this one refers to any country that's got rapid increase in employment and manufacturing okay and they're moving f- faster and faster towards your tertiary and quaternary sectors Okay, so this is usually due to an increase in wealth, good policy making as well as strong governance. So these will attract FDI, okay, or foreign direct investment from TNCs, and NIEs can also develop their own domestic companies because of the increase in investments. Okay, so NICs are basically a new um, breed of countries. Okay, they are essentially um, the middle ground. Okay, they have a bit of everything. They have got a bit of secondary, they've got a bit of primary, they've got a bit of tertiary and quaternary, okay, but they are very, very quickly moving on okay, into the higher level secondary sectors of um, the entire structure, okay? All right, then we move on to developed countries. So developed countries are countries that have already been developed, okay? So they are often called post-industrial sectors, okay? Because fewer people are employed in manufacturing industry as compared to the past. So most of these people are usually employed in your tertiary sectors, your, your quaternary sectors, all right? So there are huge events and investments in technology that has been made. So there are far more tertiary and quaternary sectors. So you notice a lot more people working in the in the offices, okay? You notice a lot more people working in things like your um, shopping malls, okay? Entertainment industries, okay? This... Um, these developed countries have got developed structures okay, in their economy such that they have very, very clearly moved on from your basic primary sectors and secondary sectors. Okay, yes, they will still have some secondary sectors, that's undoubtedly so, but um, the majority okay, of their structure is moving towards tertiary and quaternary sectors. Alright, so that's all for this video actually. It's actually quite simple. Okay, I just need to cover if you guys what the structure of the economy is, which is the four the five main sectors, as well as the three different types of development levels in the world. So all you need to do is really just understand okay, what these various structures are, as well as the varying levels of development. Okay, when it comes to essay or what usually this question I doubt will come out. Okay, it's very, very hard to test something on this entire question. It's very, very simple as well. So what you want to be looking out for is use this 
lecture or use this topic KSA um, context okay use it to form the context of any sort of argument okay if you ever need to quote something at least you know that okay Singapore is a newly industrialized country so you use that use that phrase okay it makes it um, it helps to value add to your answer all right so this chapter I think is quite simple I will wrap it up here um, the next part I will likely be looking more at your GPN already so things like NIDL production circuits intra inter firm networks okay, then moving on to TNCs and then the role of the state IOs and also we're moving quite fast I would think hopefully um, for you guys okay, into team 2 and after that we'll try and rush through team um, 2.2 which is more on your resources resource curse uh, resource endowment all the kind of things um, closer towards the end of the year okay so that um we can start to gear up for the a levels right so if any questions you can always leave in the comment section below i will answer them as as basically when i see it okay i usually see it almost immediately because i will constantly um, be looking out for any sort of questions that you guys may have so go ahead and leave it down if you did enjoy this video be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel it doesn't cost you anything and it's free okay you can always unsubscribe later on if you want to so you just can go ahead and hit that button for me all right so if not i will see you guys in the next video i think i'll be releasing one more um maybe the next two days or so on a h2 math paper then after that we will go back to nidls and gpns so i'll see you guys then have a good one and keep studying hard Bye bye